Jason Downs joins us. His uh, show, Why Am I Not Famous?, will be uh, at the Horowitz Center October 11th through the 12th, and on the 13th he'll be doing a workshop as well. And uh, it says here at 8 o'clock is the show, uh, Jason, and the first round of drinks afterward is on you. Is that true? <laughs> That's true. That's true. You don't want to miss that. So let's start out with the uh, obvious question, why are you not famous? <laughs> oh, come on. There, there are so many uh, so many reasons. It's, it's why I had to put it all into a show. There's too many to count. Off the top of my head, uh, I, I'm not a very good actor, um, <laughs> not a very good singer, <laughs> not a very good dancer. I'm really difficult to get along with, and uh, I have a big head and a hard head, both combined. And, um, you know, who wants to be around someone like that? Well, right? well, you know, I, 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 I see evidence to the contrary of everything you just said, so... <laughs> Maybe well, that... I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but my point is, is that that you know, ultimately, it doesn't even matter how good you are at these things. There's so there's so many factors. It's hard to answer that question. And ultimately, the show is about exactly the opposite. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, you know, I go from this being my my goal in life to to realizing that that uh, there are m- more important things, <laughs> many more important things, and. And uh, and so the show is just is just my my sort of journey um, throughout those foibles and fables along the way, and 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 I get to make fun of myself a lot. But but ultimately, you know, why am I not famous? It's the wrong question. Yeah, you know well, what I mean. Well, it's, I th- it's, I'm glad you brought that up because I think ultimately the show appears to have a deeper sub theme, and that is kind of self discovery. Absolutely. Okay. A- a- absolutely. It's a- it's about self discovery. It's about it's about you know finding finding your true voice, whether that's creative or personal. And it's it's about loving who you are and where you are. I mean that that's ultimately what it's about. And and that's a great universal theme because I think we all grapple with that question at at, at least one point in our life. I think we do, right? I I think so. And I I think you know that's that's what I've found doing the show. I really didn't know what kind of reaction I was going to get, but what I enjoyed most was that. Everyone could relate in some way. Like you said, it was universal. You know, they they could relate it to whatever field they they came from, uh, whatever background they came from. They could they could relate it to their own lives. So, you know, that that was the biggest compliment. It led to great it led to great discussion. It was a blast. I've I've done it you know five or six times so far. That's what I'm referring to. <clears throat> Well, for people who don't know, um, you were born and raised in Ellicott City, and, and your first taste of, of, of acting were in films made here in Maryland. Uh, I believe you were in a John Waters film, right? That's right. That was uh, he, he gave me my, my chance at, at, in my first film. God bless him. Um, he's actually a very sweet man. <laughs> I still I still get a Christmas card from him every year. He, he is. A- uh, yeah, he uh, he gave me my gave me my start there in Maryland, and that's really where you know, like you said, most of most of the early work came from. I had my first agent in uh, in Baltimore and did some Broadway, like pre Broadway at the at the Morris Mechanic in Baltimore. And anyway, did little commercials around the area and stuff. And then finally, finally branched out to New York City. And, and how old were you uh, when you first ap- appeared on film? And 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 how old were you when you went to New York City? I was I was thirteen when when John cast me in Hairspray, and I was I was thirteen when I started going back and forth to New York City. Probably right about that same time, I would I would get in the car with my with my grandmother or my or my father, and we would drive back and forth to the city in one day, back and forth to New York City in one day. Um, which you know, as as I'm sure you may know, is three and a half, four hours, yeah, um, both ways, uh, to to audition for commercials and TV and film and and um, and that's that's what I did for for several years throughout middle school and high school. I guess it was really the tail end of of middle school and into high school. So it wasn't it wasn't easy um, on me or or my family, but as, as long as I kept my grades up. My my father, you know, my father would allow allow me to continue pursuing my my crazy my crazy dreams. 
Now, and, and, and people may not realize that you are an alumni of HEC. You went to, um, you went to, to school here for a, for a bit. I did. I did. In fact, my father taught there. Speaking of my father, okay. um, he taught math there for many years, and uh, I eventually went there. I went to, I started out in the theater program at Pepperdine out in, out in California, and uh, through various life experiences, found myself back at home for a time, and, and I attended HCC for at least a year, if not more. What are your mem- I had a great time. What are your memories of those uh, days at HCC? <laughs> had had a great time it was it was a healing time for me um like i said I, I i had returned home to sort of heal myself and uh and hcc was part of that healing and and specifically the theater department i did uh did some great work with with sue kramer and valerie and and it's it's remained with me all this time and and this is exactly what has come full circle with with why am i not famous I came. I came to them. I I said, "Look, I've I've created this piece. It would mean a lot to me to come back and 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 have you guys be the first college experience that I have um, with this production." And they they were 100 percent behind it, and and it's been it's been a real blessing. It's been fantastic. And you have some uh, other alumni that you are including in the show with you. Definitely, yeah. We have uh, Paul Alvaran, who was an alumni. Megan Wheatley. Uh, Anthony Seminelli, and there's several people who are alumni and now currently work there, like Grace and, and Janelle and Santina, who I believe are all working in the theater department there. Anyway, so, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fest <laughs> of alumni. <laughs> Well, you mentioned bringing, you know, bringing the idea to Sue and, and, and talking to her about it, but where did the genesis of, of the show start, and, and, and how did you finance it? The genesis was, uh, I mean, I've continued to do theater and, and, and film throughout the years, and at various times I've made my living that way. I was doing a play recently. It's, it's been a while since I've done a real equity stage theater piece, and I did it. Uh, I did one a couple of years ago. And just being in the theater reminded me of, like, Smith Theater. I, I just smell of it. first production I did in Smith Theater was uh, Peter Pan, and I was 12 years old. Wow. And, 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 and just the smell, you know, and, and other theaters like that from my youth that I would perform in, it, it, it's hard to explain and sounds kind of cheesy, but it, it, it has a very visceral sense memory for me. And anyhow, so I was doing this play, and it was in one of these old theaters like that, and, and it just brought back all of these old songs and all these old reasons why I love the theater and why I, I, I started out wanting to do this with my life. And, and, and it got me also thinking about how far off track um, I had gotten and why. And, and so I started developing this show, which would allow me to, you know, have fun and, and perform all these old songs and do all these old little, little bits that I used to do. But within the framework of this show now, um, with this idea of making it a personal journey. So, so anyhow, it kind of was, was for me uh, cathartic and, and therapeutic um, to, to work through this whole process and, and look at it, you know, more objectively now that I'm, I mean, I've, I've literally just turned 40 this past week. And um, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's grown up time, you know? And, and I noticed too, when, when, when looking at reviews of the show that you, it, it's kind of a, not only are you progressing through these stages, but your 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 connection to pop culture is too, because there's Elvis and there's there's Frank Sinatra and 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 these different impressions that you did. Yes, there's um, yeah, there's there's all these these old impressions, and 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 the reason is because that was sort of my that was my gateway into into this idea of wanting to be famous and. And uh, and then sort of emulating these these people who were just ultra ultra mega stars, and 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 it turned out that I was a pretty good mimic. You know what I mean? I I, I was I loved to observe people, and I had an eye for it, and I could I could I could do I could do what those guys did. You know, um, which was charming. 
uh, for, you know, for a kid to be able to do those things and, and make people laugh and smile and whatnot. But ultimately, there's nothing original there. You know, there's a, it's, not, it's not me. You know, I'm, I'm imitating Elvis or Michael Jackson or, you know, later it was, it was Johnny Cash or Jim Morrison. <laughs> you know, but where am I in that? You know what I mean? And studying these, all of these great artists was a good musical education. But ultimately, it was not serving me as, or cultivating my own art um, as a performer or as a, an individual artist. So it was, it was a struggle. It was a struggle, I think, especially because I got such a positive reaction so early on, it ended up having, having a negative effect on what would have been the adult Jason Downs, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But is it safe to say that through them you did find uh, your own voice? I, I mean, you you were for a brief period. If people don't know, you were briefly uh, on the UK charts, right, with your own single. Yes, ultimately, ultimately, um, I, I I did uh, get signed to a record label, a great label, and uh, and had a top twenty hit overseas, which which is you know a modicum of success when looked at from the outside. Um, you know, and, and I'm probably highly critical of myself, obviously, as an artist, but it was still, it still wasn't me, uh, in, in quotations. Like, okay. for instance, you know, I, I was, I was teamed up with a producer who had this concept of, okay, let's combine what Jason Downs is doing, which is sort of this folk country rock thing with hip hop. He was a hip hop producer, mm -hmm. so so it was this really you know high concept kind of cool you know gimmick uh, of combining country and hip hop to make this sort of pop sound, which you know like I said, uh, like like you said, ha had some success, and you know I really thought that, that was going to be it. I thought, okay, well this is the beginning. I finally I finally got in there, and and things will just roll from here, you know, um, and and quite the opposite ended up happening uh, for various reasons, you know, part, part, partially my own ignorance and stupidity uh, and arrogance and partially, you know, the nature of, of the people I had working for me and, and their shortcomings and or, you know, misjudgments, uh, par partially the fact that the record label Jive that I was with got sold at, right after my second album was released to BMG, uh, you know, just so many, so many factors that, that sort of landed me back on my butt, so to speak. Um, I mean, you know, <laughs> ultimately, I believe that all things happen for a reason. Yeah. And, and that, you know, I, clearly I have more to learn. And, you know, clearly the universe is smacking me upside the head again and saying, you know, no, you're not ready for this, or no, you're not ready for that, or you still have a lot to learn here and there. And anyhow, I, I finally sort of woke up to that voice, and accepted it and tried to find happiness in the presence, in the moments and with and with the the people and and the love that was that was right in front of me. Yeah. Um, you know, that I was often missing. And I find that interesting because pop stardom is is such a fleeting thing anyway and mm -hmm. for you to have noticed that and, and kind of incorporated that idea into your show a little bit is is, is pretty interesting um you know a to, sign of a sign of maturity hopefully <laughs> yeah I, well yeah yeah i think that's the best way to put it because i, I was noticed you were talking yeah. about kind of this this in, in, in some of the literature sue sent me um you were talking about this kind of fleeting pop american idol type culture that we live in now where people are just famous for brief periods of like little snapshots of right. time and uh i i think that's very true it, it's very true. It's very true. I mean, uh, we we could talk for for hours about that. I've I've read many many articles on on the subject of this, you know, celebrity mentality and and this sort of celebrity age. But I mean, I I came from even before then. I mean, the the, the guys that I was studying, they, they I mean, they they've stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you you may not like Elvis's music, and and you know, and musically. Theoretically, you can look at it and see, okay, well, it's extremely simple music. You know, what I mean, it's not like the music itself is so amazing. Um, but he, as a as a figure and as an artist and 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 someone who really found something fresh, 
not only not only musically because it was fresh and vocally because it was he was doing something unique especially for a caucasian person at that time mm-hmm. but but physically physically he created a, 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 a way of moving now i'm not saying that no one had ever done you know some of the things that he's been doing but certainly he 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 discovered something that was completely his own and it and it has and that's the reason why he's lasted i mean you and you can look at michael jackson and say the same thing and you can look at the beatles and these different you know there are some of these artists who who were pop quote unquote like you're saying in these flash in the pans that everyone thought they would be and and doubtless there are countless other you know, people who had a hit or, or, you know, the one-hit wonder surrounding these artists that I'm mentioning. But there were those that stood the test of time and have and have lasted for various reasons. Yeah, and, um, and it's hard to say what those reasons are sometimes because you're right, you, if both of the people, well, a lot of the people that you've mentioned, like Elvis and Michael Jackson, just grabbed onto things that were popular and, like you said, made them their own. Uh, and then made, made made them their own and jumped it to added, the next level, but added something. Yes, added something to it that was unique. Mm-hmm. And and I always thought that I would do that, and that's what attracted me to the, this idea of combining hip hop and country. I thought, oh well, you know, that's not something that's really been done, or at least done on a mass sort of you know popular level. You know, just just like the moves that Michael or or Elvis were were sort of you know, trying out on stage, they had seen perhaps versions of that in other places, but they made it their own. So so here I am thinking, okay, well, maybe this is that thing for me. Um, I, I was thinking that, that that might be what makes me, you know, special and or lasting or, you know, oh, okay, well, he's the guy who pushed the limits of, of country. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. I, it's silly <laughs> to, say, to say it out loud, but, but that's, kind of what I was thinking at the time. And they were both huge and continue to be both huge forms exactly. of music. And, and you're right, no one, I mean, you, you hear little bits of them being put together, but no one really solidified that, that's for sure. And, exactly, right? exactly. So I, I, you know, in all my arrogance, thought that maybe <laughs> I was that guy. <laughs> well... <laughs> Uh, we're talking with Jason Downs. Uh, the show is Why Am I Not Famous? It's coming October 11th and 12th to the Horowitz Center. And um, I, I hear you're doing a workshop on the 13th of Sunday, right? I am. I am. I'm doing a, a little workshop the next day uh, for anyone who wants to come by. I think it's going to be really, really fun and laid back and exciting. Um, we're going to just challenge challenge each other to, to find find this creative voice find that that inner voice um, that is that can be so elusive and do some some different different things to help help us get there all right so, uh, yeah please please join please come to the show please please join us sounds like a lot of fun uh, before you go here uh, I've got some names that I've uh, or some things that I've pulled off your for web page so some quick questions for you all right yep on quick on Kickstarter you you reached your goal to fund this, and you promised a naked photo of yourself for anyone who kicked in more than five grand. I see someone did that. Did you deliver? <laughs> I I did. I uh, <laughs> I I, uh, I made good. I made good. Yes, I made good. Now I, on your Facebook page, I don't know if you were joking or not, but you mentioned that Gavin DeGraw and you auditioned for a Russian boy band. Is that true? We did. We were with the same agent for a while in New York, and we're and we're friends and. And uh, one of the things we we happened to audition for together was was a a, a Russian boy band. I can't remember the name of it now. But, Sputnik, um, probably. Yeah, or something no, like that. that was real. That was real. <laughs> that was real. I didn't know you were joking or not because you do have a good sense of humor. And uh, I thought, you know, that, is that that would be weird? So they intended to take you back to Russia and make you super popular there. Yep. Yep, were they going to kidna- the kidnap you in a burlap sack and take you over there? That, <laughs> that was the idea. I'm sure they were going to let us come home every now and then. I don't think it was, you know, like... Uh, I like, hope so. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, they wanted an American, you know, boy band. A la, you know, whatever was popular at the time, Backstreet Boys or something. Uh, and you're also good friends with Melissa Leo, a, a name who's familiar to uh, Baltimore TV fans who starred in Homicide back in the day and also an Academy Award winner. Um, Absolutely. She's a huge Absolutely. supporter of yours. How did you become friends? We are part of the same theater company. Um, 
in upstate New York. Okay. And we, that's how we met about, I don't know, about 12 years ago now. And we ended up doing lots of, um, of work together. And eventually I started in a film with her and, and, uh, it's, it's called racing daylight. And, uh, so that was that was pretty huge, and then I sort of started working as her personal assistant um, as well. I, it's something I've done over the years to to help um, you know supplement my income. Uh, I worked, I did the same sort of work for Aiden Quinn for for a few years, and it uh, it, it can be exciting. <laughs> it can be exciting. Like for instance, she took me to the Academy Awards when she won. Oh, cool. Um, so you know there there are perks, um, but yeah no she's she's fantastic she's fantastic and and it's been a it's been a huge influence to be around someone so great uh, at at their craft and and uh, and learn that way. Well, Jason, well, it's, it's been a pleasure talking to you. We're out of time, but thank you very uh, very much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you. All right. And the show is Why Am I Not Famous? Again, it's uh, the weekend of October 11th at the Horwood Center, 8 o'clock both nights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. You too.